Hey. hey guys. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of your dev vlogs. Um, awesome. Yeah, um, so when I watched your dev vlogs, I just saw this really tight-knit group of people, and I just thought you guys were just like, like, you looked like you could hang out as friends. Yeah, we are friends. That's really, okay. thanks for picking up on that. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys hang out outside of the office? Well, we have a lot of... Our whole office is sort of like a, a friendship still. You know, so. Yeah, we all kind of uh, we work out of a co-working space, and so we're all sort of like employees of each other, friends of each other, social group peers. It's uh, it's actually really cool. Lots of fun. Okay, so I guess I should do a kind of a formal intro. I just started recording here, so. To anyone out there listening, this is a different type of video that I would normally do, but I'm going to give it a shot. I don't have any interviews at all on my YouTube channel, but uh, I thought I would ask the, de the devs of Cash Crop, the delightfully fun cannabis farming tycoon game, to do an interview with me. And, woo! Woo! So, um, uh, I guess we could just do a bit of small talk, and then I have this list of 20 questions that I wrote down myself. So... I guess the first question I have for you guys is a bit of an obvious one, but I guess it wouldn't be uh, too far of a stretch of the imagination that the devs of a cannabis farming tycoon game <laughs> indulge in the recreational use of cannabis. <laughs> that would not be a far cry, no. <laughs> okay. Now, now that I've got that out of the way, because, I mean, <laughs> that would suck to be like, oh, hey, you guys have a... A cannabis farming game. You guys uh, use cannabis, right? And then you guys be like, "No, we don't do that." <laughs> oh, we, we, we don't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one of the. What Joe was saying is, it's one of the perks of uh, being in Washington State. So it's totally legal here. Um, so we can actually drive drive a couple miles to a store and actually buy weed. It's pretty cool. That's really cool, actually. Yeah, that is up here in Canada. I believe you need a medical card for it to be legal. But uh, you know, I've been known to indulge in that without one of those. <laughs> um, so, is there anything you can't talk about? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, now that I've gotten the, the more controversial question out of the way, I guess, that was the <laughs> one. If you weren't be able to talk about something, I guess it would have been that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your channel. We noticed that a Cash Crop is pretty unique compared to some of the other games you play. Yeah, you know, my channel doesn't really have a set form. I just kind of record my gameplay, and if I do well, then I'll upload it. And I play with my friends, and they enjoy it when I upload our gameplay, too. So that's why I say it's definitely a different type of video for me to be interviewing devs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm just such a huge fan of Cash Crop. I just had to ask you guys to do this. Thanks, man. That's really flattering. <laughs> no problem. You guys are doing a great job over there. Uh, question number two on my list is, how did Cash Crop start and who started it? Um, okay, so uh, this is Grant. Um, Cash Crop started, it le did legit started at the end of 2016, but I think Cash Crop actually started back in like 2012 when I had a medical print to grow. And so my friends and I had like essentially a co-op garden um, totally legal, um, totally above board, uh, with medical permits in Washington State, and uh, I was growing like uh, growing weeds, hy weed hydroponically in my apartment. Uh, and <clears throat> actually, I owned a house, but we had like a separate structure, so it was an apartment. And instead of renting it, I decided to grow a whole bunch of marijuana in it, and it was so much fun and such a challenge and so interesting. And i had been making games for a while, and I just thought, man, this is like this is ripe for a game. Um, and that was like kind of prior to me ever playing Stardew or any of these other farming games. And um, so I had the idea of bringing it up to some of the, one of the software companies that's run out of the co-working space, um, Fuse, which is the name of the co-working space. And uh, we brought it up to a couple of the businesses here. And uh, we ended up uh, creating a team with Joe and Amy um, <clears throat> to really give this game a shot. That is so cool. So now whenever I play Cash Crop, I'm actually playing the Grant Williams simulator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's cool. I've always kind of wondered, you know, how it started. Um, thanks for sharing that with me. Now, like I said, now I feel like I'm playing Grant all of a sudden in Cash Crop. 
Uh, well, you know, the game is made by more than just one person. Um, you know, Joe and Amy contribute quite a bit. Uh, Ty, who's not on the call, he's actually created, uh, puts a lot of creative, creative talent and horsepower into this. So it's kind of like um, building a game is sort of like raising a child and that it's done by a tribe. It really takes a lot of people, okay. in, including awesome players like yourself, right, who are interested and keep us energized and um, encouraged. So it's, it's really like an ecosystem that builds the game. Yeah, you guys do a great job on the forums. I mean, there's... I'm sure a couple things that I've mentioned on there that you guys have put in there. So, I mean, that makes me feel like I'm an important player. Yes. <laughs> okay, I guess we can move on to my next question. Who did the music for Cash Crop? Oh, um, well, in regards to the music, um, yeah, um, so actually one of our, um, one of our other coworkers, so we, um, we work for Wildland, and we still work for Wildland, but we're also working for Cash Crop. Um, so one of our coworkers from Wildland uh, actually has a brother-in-law named Zach who came up with, like, as soon as we heard the intro music, it was just, oh, my gosh, I felt like there were stars in my eyes. Like, just my reaction specifically, like, wow, I could listen to this over and over again. And we have, like, every time we start playing it, in the office, you know, people start singing along or, you know, whatever. It's, it's very catchy. But, um, yeah, so he's the one that ended up making that uh, for us. And so he's been really good at uh, providing the, all of the music, not just the intro for that. I absolutely love the menu music. It, I've never heard anything like it, but at the same time, it sounds like those old video games I used to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were trying to go for... Um, sort of a more, like, nostalgic retro feel with it, but, you know, something that uh, it, it something that was a little bit more updated because, you know, we want the whole game to be sort of rela relatable in that sense. So, yeah, it, we definitely tried for that sort of old-time pixel game times, you know, with the modern twist to it. Yeah, I think the first time I actually loaded up Cash Crop, I just kind of stayed in the main menu for a while, listening. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, forget the game, this music, I could just sit here and listen to this. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Okay, I guess I can move on to my question number four is, what engine does Cash Crop run on? Uh, Cash Crop is running on Unity, I think we're at 5.6. Mm -hmm. We just updated and... It didn't break that much stuff, so it's kind of nice. But yeah, so it's running on Unity. Um, yeah. Okay. I, w I wasn't really <laughs> sure what engines there there could be, but uh, Unity, that seems like the engine that most people are using nowadays. It's pretty popular. It's got, um, for like, just personal use, you can get a lot of the features for free, and then it's like, unless you start making a ton of money or you're like a small business like us, you can get away with the free license for fun games. Um, I'm trying to think of, I think Cluster might be on it. Yeah, I think it's so. Really yeah. It's, it's nice. There's lots of examples, and um, a lot of people use it. It's one of the more popular ones. I know, like, Kerbal Space Program uses Unity. Um, uh, that, that, that fighting indie game where you're like, it's like a pixel fighter where you're, it's sort of reminiscent of like Super Nintendo side scrolling fighters and that one's in Unity. Domino? Yeah, yeah. Um, which one? I can't remember what it's called. There's one like that called Domina. I don't know. Hmm. It's a, maybe that, that might be what it was. I remember this one had like, it was a kind of cartoony graphics and it was like kind of a brawler. You could be like a, like a crocodile guy or like a tough brawler dude. Anyway, uh, yeah, Unity is kind of like the go to, I think, for most like personal small projects and then I guess some people use Unreal. Um, there's Unreal is another popular one. It just it, it's a nice midway between us not having to reinvent the wheel for everything, but also like we have quite a bit of flexibility in what we can do. Okay. So. Well I don't know too much about engines or game developing, so, but I just kinda wondered what engine you guys use because I know there's a lot out there. Mm -hmm. um, so the next question I have is, what is the most difficult part of developing crash, cash crop? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. What the, pick, pick, I think there's the, the most difficult part that's developing that is not programming is figuring out what 
easier to work on. Yeah. Like we, we spend a lot of time like, okay, we've got these five things and they're all super important to us. Which one do we want to do next? Mm -hmm. Or like, if we do this one, we can, you know, do this other, you know, if we get this, this different seed things in, then we can start opening up some more seed gameplay. And, uh, oh, for a while, uh, I think it was before Early Access, you, there, uh, the contracts didn't have specific strains to them. So it was like there's no point to grow any of the expensive ones <laughs> and stuff like that. So it's like as, as we started opening stuff up, it builds on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, you know, what do we, what do we want next? So that's kind of why we had that announcement uh, this weekend about what what to kind of work on, and we we're kind of getting a couple little things like the the clip to drive fields. That was a pretty pretty popular. Yeah, you guys just added that one. I haven't got a chance to try it yet, but it will soon. It's pretty fun. Um, I don't know. Let's what if, um, let's ask your artist too. What do you think is really tough about this, Amy? Um, I think it's both a blessing and a curse being able to create like an actual game um because you sort of have a blank canvas and you're like i could do anything in the world but what should i do you know and so uh, it, it's sort of fun just like getting inspiration and you know being able to i guess you know it, it's challenging but it's worth it um just being completely like you know you are the one person creating all of these you know sort of miniature lives within this game um, so that, that's sort of been the hardest part for me is like, oh my gosh, I can do so many things. What is it that I actually want to do for this? And what, what does the game call for? And it's, it's sort of been taking on its own, like, personal style, its own, it's definitely been coming into its own a lot more. So there's a reason why I would design something like one way instead of the other is because the game would call for that other way instead and you know it just it starts making more and more sense and building upon itself yeah you know and i really appreciate that you guys do uh community discussions <laughs> after you guys saying that you, the most difficult part was not knowing what to put in next that's good that you guys have community discussions because then everybody can kind of say what they want and i think <laughs> I looked in the community discussions and everyone was saying the same thing almost anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's cool. It's really encouraging to see there's like a consensus uh, emerges uh, once in a while. It, that helps us out a lot. Well, I think part of that is, I know you play on the weekend very frequently. I play during the day making sure everything works. So it's like everybody is playing it. So everybody is mm -hmm. you know, bumping into the same things. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question I have, which is a super obvious one, and I think we already answered it, is where is the dev team based out of Washington? Yeah, we're located in uh, Tri-Cities, uh, Washington, specifically Richland, Washington, but we try to go by Tri-Cities. There's like three smaller cities that are all adjacent to each other. They kind of act like one big city. And um, we are in a co-working space in, um, off of Howard Eamon Park by the Columbia River. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I've always wanted to go to Washington. I'm from Alberta, Canada, Alberta, Canada myself, and uh, I think I've always wanted to go to uh, Seattle. There, it's it's like the uh, American Vancouver for me. Yeah, it really is. Seattle's awesome. We're also really excited to put Seattle into the video into into Cash Crop as well. Yeah, I haven't actually got too much into the world map. Uh, just you know, trying to micromanage my farm, and then so getting into the world map where I'm at right now seems a little bit advanced. But uh, I would definitely love to see that expanded upon. Okay. Yeah, when um, when we open up more licenses, like right now, you can just grow outdoors. Eventually, you'll be able to grow indoors with all that fun equipment. And we also want to open it up to like um, like a retail shop license, and also an oil processing license, and even like doing like little glass blowing mini games and stuff. And so we think a lot of that would have a, a place in like in an urban area like Seattle where you could walk while your farm is being worked on by your crew and you got your sprinklers up and stuff, you could sneak out to Seattle for an adventure and uh, set up your shop or sell some weed on the street or find a quest and get into some trouble. I completely agree. I'm super excited to see what you guys do with that. Uh, let's see here the next question. Have any of the devs worked on any other titles previously? Um, I've only worked on like little pet projects and stuff like when I was at college, but um, I think Grant, Grant worked on 
Unexpected. Yeah, um, I actually um, I, I have one game that I helped launch before this one. It's on Steam. It's called Dragon. And it's like um, it's a role-playing game where you play as a dragon instead of as a traditional hero. So imagine Skyrim. Instead of being about like the hero, the hero's lame. Let's make a game about a dragon. So you can fly around, you can destroy things, um, eat and level up. So it's kind of like an, R- an inverted RPG where the story is about the monster. Um, that actually let me leave my day job and start a, start a, start a career um, as, a game de- as a game designer. That's crazy because I've heard about that game before and uh, I can't believe you worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a crazy challenge. Um, I actually did a live stream earlier today on Dragon. It was really fun, but uh, working on two games at once is really difficult, and uh, I know the community on Dragon is expecting some big updates, so I'm hoping to, to be able to deliver on that and uh, cash crop over the coming months. Okay, well, we won't worry about Dragon. I'm sure you have <laughs> your hands full there. Um, have you done any interviews about cash crop before? Uh, yeah, the local news here has been pretty pretty uh, receptive, which is in, which is encouraging because most the kind of the average age in Tri Cities is pretty high. That's like I don't know, probably like fifty or something or fifty five. So video games about marijuana aren't uh, <laughs> something you see on the, the news very often. But uh, they've been pretty interested in it. The Journal of Business. Um, we've had a couple streamers carry the game, but um, we actually haven't had any um, in industry like Game of Sutra or like. Anything like that covered the game yet? So we kind of we're we're anxiously anticipating some uh, positive media coverage at some point when maybe when the game gets bigger or or whatever. Well, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like uh, that I'm a social media media outlet, but uh, I'll give you guys as much positive exposure as I can on my channel. Awesome! No, that means a lot to us, man. It means a lot. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Uh, let's see here. Is there any plans to make an end game scenario besides bankruptcy and getting busted? Do you have any suggestions? Uh, like, say, you make a million dollars. That's an end game scenario. You beat the game. Mm. I think we talked about at one point having different starting conditions. So more traditional tycoon game where it's like, oh, you come into the farm, it's in this state, you know, you have a good year to get it profitable or something like that. But we haven't recently talked about yeah. that kind of stuff. We'd also toss around the idea of having like sort of a Stardew style in game where the game essentially gives you a score at like a certain fixed year, like year ten or twenty or something. And the game is essentially done. Or maybe that's more like Game Dev Tycoon. Maybe I'm confusing my games. But at some point, the game could say, hey, you're done, give you a point score for how far you've gone, and then let you continue to play indefinitely into the future. So we're definitely throwing around different ideas. I think the jackpot achievement is the closest thing. Yeah, the jackpot achievement is the closest thing to an in-game condition. If you get a million dollars, is it? It's a million. Yeah. I noticed one of you devs, that's like the only achievement you have. (laughs) <laughs> so the, the funny thing about that is if I have Steam open and I'm running the game in Unity, it'll talk to Steam. And so like we have a bunch of cheap enabled stuff so I can test things really fast. And so I accidentally get myself that itchy man. So usually I'm pretty good about clearing them out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, an end game scenario, that's really probably for late development, but I, I can see Cash Crop as the type of game where you can play indefinitely without... Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, next question. What feature are you most excited to include? Ooh, I think, I think we can all answer that. Yeah. Uh, we'll let Amy go first. Uh, yeah, so the one that's actually that I'm excited to include, which we haven't really... We sort of... We semi-worked on it, um, is... Well, one, the character selector, so just being able to play as different characters, but eventually I would love for there to be more of sort of an RPG element added with, um, like, changing out clothes or upgrading your gear or something like that. Just the ability to, like, sort of personalize your own characters so that you can either select the characters that we've created for you, or you can go and be your own creative self and create the character that you want to be. But we're still working on that, and that's a little bit further down the line. But I'm pretty excited about that, hopefully. Yeah, that would be really cool, like a character a character customization. It would be really awesome. What do you think, Jeff? Um, I think for me, I'm really excited about the strain breeding strain score 
thing. So we talked about it early on where you you could make your White Widow and then you as you pick like the best traits and stuff, you're like, oh, this one's score 80. And then you keep going and you tweak it a little bit more. You take a little more care, better care of it. And it's like, oh, now you're at a 90. And then, you know, you can sell it for more. Or um, we were talking about maybe doing like that marketplace thing, making it a global thing for all the players. Um, and then kind of letting you discover your own strains and stuff would be really fun too. So get a bunch of the classic base strains and then, you know, first person to, yeah. to build this specific hybrid, you get to name it maybe, or just some of that kind of stuff, I think would be really fun. Yeah, I'm excited to see that come to fruition as well. Grant, what about you? Oh man, that's a tough question. So I think, I think what's really compelling for me is not one specific feature, but it's sort of like when I close my eyes and I imagine what I'm playing like towards the end game and I have like lots of sprinklers everywhere and they're on timers and I have little robots moving around my farm, like harvesting weed and like just that I love being in the center of like a lot of action in video games. And so like the idea that I can have this farm that's got all these crew moving around and like just all these different layers of complexity between these different systems like lighting and irrigations and then like the water, like I don't know, just having all of that set up to where I feel like I'm really running on really running a farm at scale is really compelling to me. Okay. Uh, let's see here what my next question is. What genre of games do you play the most? So Joe's actually a really competitive player on a couple games. I, I've been playing a lot of MOBAs. Um, and then I played a little bit of Diablo 3 season stuff, but I didn't get too far in that. Um, every so often... Usually it's when they do an expansion, I really get into City Skylines. Yeah, so I lose a lot of time for that one. So, but that's recently where it's been. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd reflect that. Uh, I love Tycoon and city building games, so City Skylines. Prison Architect, I've played for like 200 hours. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed Stardew, of course. Um, game Dev Tycoon was pretty good. Uh, I really like just like that tycoon sim game. Uh, but I do play a lot as a... As a game designer, I have to make I force myself to play some different games. So like Hyperlight Drifter was really cool. I like that. Binding of Isaac, um, a little more eclectic. I don't know if you played that one. No, but all my friends play it. Yeah. So, what about you, Amy? Um, yeah, so I actually I don't really do first-person shooters as much. And um, I also I'm more of like a console player. So I do a lot of like more Zelda or The Witcher or um, I've done a lot of Pokemon in the past and of course, you know, we all I started out with the original like Mario, the Nintendo, all those games, things like that. And you know, playing video games is actually a huge like it's sort of a family get together thing in like in you know, within my family. So growing up we played a lot of different video games and uh, a lot of N sixty four, a lot of PS two, stuff like that, so yeah, those kind of games are some of my favorites. Nice. Okay. So, who decides what features get built? Kind of everybody. <laughs> I, I think technically Grant has the final call. Uh, if, yeah. When it comes down to it, but uh, yeah, we're we're usually like at least ninety percent consensus type thing. Yeah, and I, I found that apparently if I if I talk loud enough, then people usually tend to do it. I'm gonna keep it up. I wasn't trying, but it sort of happened. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to skip that question because I can tell that you guys uh, share the work over there. Um, was there anything in the original cash crop that you had to leave out? Actually, yeah. So um, when we, we came up with the idea for cash crop, we took it to um, uh, San Francisco to pitch it to a bunch of publishers. That was like in like late February. And we had a lot of traction, but the scale of the game that they were interested in funding was a lot more than they were really interested in funding but we could break or the money that we could raise internally so we had originally envisioned it as more of like a tycoon style game a little less RPG so you wouldn't use WASD or the arrow keys to move your character you would use the mouse to kind of guide your character it was more about moving like a 
operating the crew at scale. And then as we kind of developed it and kind of ran into some technical challenges and time considerations, and then just matters of taste also, uh, we decided to make it a little more like um, a Stardew Tycoon hybrid where you play as a single, singular character, but you also have access to crew, which you can change to play as and still operate a farm at like a larger scale. So we try to do a hybrid approach. Um, so that leaving leaving a lot of those high lift um, tycoony features behind for the time. Okay. Well, there's no weed in Stardew Valley, so I don't play that. Yeah, I don't play right. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think Cash Crop is a niche game? Um, I, I think that we're. I mean, it, it sort of is. It definitely has that. Like we're trying to be trailblazers at this point. You know, this is where. It's one of the few games out there that you can play that has more of um, There are a few others, but I, I feel like we're, we're trying to, besides that, we're trying to make this sort of for the masses so that, you know, anyone can pick it up and be like, oh, well, I don't mm -hmm. smoke necessarily, but I like farming simulators, so I can play this where, like, other people sort of... Mm -hmm. Talking from my own personal experience, oh, my gosh, this game looks so cute. I want to play it, too, you know? So, like... Anyone across the board, whether or not you smoke or don't, whatever, we're sort of trying to, to market it towards anyone who's even interested in playing a game like this. So. I have to agree, your, uh, your artwork is very cute, Amy. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I think I saw somebody in the community discussion say, it's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, don't listen to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, next question. When was the last time you had to meet a tough deadline? Um, tough deadline. So, the right before that convention oh, yeah. that uh, they took the game to, that was a pretty tough deadline for us. So, we had only been working on the game like eight weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and they were taking it to investors. So, that was, that was a really tough one. Uh, the early access one was a little tough. Um, I think we had to cut a couple features yeah. that weren't quite polished enough. So the early access one was like a big deal. Well, and then uh, when we were in early access, it was like what four hours, and then they dumped us into the general Ugh. the general store. And it was that was that wasn't a deadline so much as just like a panic attack <laughs> because all this all of a sudden it's like right next to like oh what was it. Uh, like Witcher and like yeah. all those other like triple A games and we had a couple people who were like, What is this? this is <laughs> we're like, We're supposed to be in early access, like <laughs> so I don't know and then after I think it was after in the morning in the morning and finally fixed whatever it was, but yeah, we had, we had gotten bumped out of Early Access for a while and put into the commercial marketplace and we were like, You wanna go back to Early Access where it's warm and safe? <laughs> It's not as bad because we try to do releases whenever we have a significant thing done. So we're not really driven by like a, a rush deadline. It's more of, oh, we got this thing done. Sweet. Let's double check it, make sure everybody signs off on it, and then let's just get it out to people so they can, you know, they don't have to wait like a month or two between bills. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's where I'm going to come back to your, you, uh, your activity on the forums. I've played so many early access games that the devs post once a week or, you know, less than that. And it's just really good to see you guys come out with weekly patches because I've played early access games that, you know, don't get monthly patches. Yeah. So, so I really have to commend you guys for putting out so many patches. And like I said, every one that you guys put out, it just adds so much more. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, I think part of that is because we played early access games like that, yeah. and we're like, well, we're making it, so I want to <laughs> get stuff out earlier. <clears throat> What's the longest amount of time you've worked on Cash Cropped at once? Oh, man. Uh, I played it over a weekend, straight, pretty much straight into a Monday, um, a few weeks prior to early access, so I think I played like... 30 hours of cash crop over four days or something like that, including <laughs> between working on it, gameplay testing, balancing. That was a lot. I mean, just to, between, it, that had been after an entire week, through the weekend, into the next week. So it all kind of blended together. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I'm anywhere close to there because I think I've been like 
manage hours. Like, I, I, I have to take breaks doing all that programming. Jen's work is much harder than mine, so he has to take <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, I guess the most that I've done, it wasn't like continuous sort of, it was like I went to work that day, I worked on cash crop, and then that night I couldn't sleep, so I just worked on cash crop <laughs> and then I came to work again the next day and I worked on it again, so that was like semi a lot, but you know, that's it. What are some of the, cha what are some challenges for cash crop in the foreseeable future? Um... We have a couple challenges. So one of them would be adoption. We really want to make sure that this game gets out to enough players that it can become viable. Um, we have some really supportive shareholders and investors locally, but you know, at the end of the day, they want to see a return on their investment. And so getting the game in a good enough position on tight budgets in a competitive marketplace like Steam, uh, you know, that's, that creates a lot of challenges so, and, and a lot of pressure about performance. So I think that's probably probably the biggest issue is trying to turn this into a self-sustaining enterprise just as soon as possible. Um, running this game off of goodwill and um, bootstrappy budgets, it would be nice to get it to the point where it could evolve into a full-fledged self-supporting game that helps us bring in extra talent and, and resources to really open it up. Uh, what do you guys think? There's, like, there's some minor technical stuff, but I mean, it's all boring, like, no one's even going to notice the performance or <laughs> Some resolution supporting, or like yeah. I gotta reach. I gotta change how the save files are saved so that they're well, they can persist between versions easier. There's, there's a lot of technical stuff that is gonna get tackled. So um, yeah, and I think just on my part, just staying organized and keeping with specific, like you know, saving things a certain way and making layers so they can go back and tweak things. That's the only thing I can see in the future. I can, I, ne I can never get lazy, basically. Okay. Poor Joe. All he sees is ones and zeros over there. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, what is something cool in your game that nobody really notices? Oh, there's a... There's the... I think you saw him, Lauren. I don't think anybody's figured out how to unlock him yet. I have to go look at see who's... Got to see achievement, and then there's uh, one other achievement that doesn't do anything quite yet, and I'm thinking anybody else has found that one either. So we we have stuck some Easter eggs in there. Oh, um, <laughs> I think um, as far as like, there's a lot of really I don't know, well designed complexity into how the plants grow and live, and like how your efforts turn into more or less um, weed at the end of the day when you harvest them. So there's a lot of there's a lot of complexity between how the plants are taken care of, when their knees aren't getting met, how that creates stress, how that stress affects health. We try to like inform this by like actually making it seem like you're taking care of an actual plant, kind of unlike Stardew where you just kind of water things. And so we wanted the game to have a really um, deep, I suppose, um, ecology system for the plants, which is uh, not a lot of other games have. And we want it to be deep and fun such that you might not notice how complex it is, but that it plays in um, kind of in an organic and expected way. I don't know if we've reached that point yet, but that's that's kind of the aspiration. That's sort of the point I wanted to make, actually, was like, you know, just the fact that, uh, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words or whatever, but the best design is the design that no one notices. So the best game is like, you know, the stuff that no one notices because they have nothing to complain about. So, Good point. Yeah. Yeah, all the artwork that goes into the growing weed plant, I guess I've kind of looked over it, but when I first started, I, it was it was really neat seeing all the different stages of the plants. I, I had no idea there was going to be that many different stages, you know. So you guys did a really good job on that, and I guess for me that was something that was really cool that it, maybe, I mean I noticed it at first, but now more as I play I don't really notice it as much. Um, Perfect. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted the plants to be their own character, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh. so no, it looks like no one's figured out how to get Lauren to join yet. There's been a few people who found the lava hole, but no one's figured out how to get Lauren to join yet. So I guess, that, sorry, we're, we're, we're looking at the Steam achievements uh, in uh, regard to your previous question about. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I haven't yeah. figured out how to get him to join either. 
If you walk down to him, he gives you a hint. He's just standing there in the level? Yeah, he's standing there. You have to kind of explore the map. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> in, a little, he's in a drum circle. Um, and so if you get to him, he'll give you a hint on how, to, on how to get him to join you. Okay, here I'm just kind of huddled around my plants, and I don't really go anywhere else. So. Cool. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a big world for you to explore. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you learned that you didn't know at the beginning of de development? Oh, jeez. Yeah, a ton of things. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll let other people, I'll let you guys talk first. So, um, when I started the project, the last time I touched Unity was like Unity 3, I think. Um, and it was like all amateur, like just for funsies type projects. Um, at Wildland, I'm a full stack developer, so I'm, I'm normally doing web development. So for me, pretty much most of what's going on is new or newish mm -hmm. or slightly different in this version of Unity. Um, so I've, I've had to learn a lot of Unity specific stuff. Um, and then in regards to what I've learned, oh, I've done pixel art before. Uh, it's something that I've enjoyed in the past, but I've never actually used. There's a program that I use called Asplite, and it's available on the Steam Store. But I've been leaning very heavily on it. It's um, it's been really good for keeping out our sprites and our sprite sheets and whatnot. So, but I don't know. Let's see. Um, I think the biggest. I think actually, all the biggest thing that I had learned would be related to what Amy said earlier, which is like managing all the assets. Has been like a huge challenge between all the code that Joe does, all the game assets that Amy does, all the assets for the web page, all the assets we need for the promotion and like YouTube videos, getting the trailer together. There's just an enormous amount of stuff that I have to touch, and so learning to touch that and use those things in an organized way has been a challenge. I can imagine. Um, I'm a huge fan of your developer video logs. When can we expect DevBlog 3 to release? Uh, we have we have it ready, so um, it's going to get pushed. I don't know, pretty it will be today, but this week we're kind of it's kind of saving it to launch with the next patch um, and the next patch update. And then I think it'll be another week or two, and then we should have DevBlog 4 out. So, is there anything you'd like you'd like to you'd like to hear us talk about or? Um, specifically we should cover or shouldn't cover in those blogs? I, I mean, me personally in DevBlog 2, I love the fact that you were showing like glass art and stuff like that. Cool. So, I don't know, if you could incorporate like how you did in DevBlog 2 just to show, you know, a little bit of the culture outside of the game, I thought that was really cool. Awesome, we'll do that. Um, one last question. For all of you, choose one, edibles, flowers, or dabs. <laughs> um, I, I think edibles for me, I prefer mint, actually. Mm -hmm. They're uh, lovely, and um, they make your best song good after work. <laughs> um, I, I like flour. I've got, it's, I guess it's not that old school, but I got a little Magic Flight launch box, and it's kind of like this, it's, Really silly. It's just like a simple battery and stuff. So I've got this whole like ritual thing. You know, <laughs> I kind of sit down, get some Oreos, <laughs> put on a or something, and you know. Yeah, um, I think I'd have to say I think I have to say flour too. Although more recently, um, I've been using oil like vape pens more often because they're so approachable and easy and delicious. But I. Um, I, uh, I didn't actually start smoking weed until I was 25, uh, which is pretty late for most people. And uh, I was introduced with some really great, um, really great flowers. So I don't think I'll ever forget that. Hey, awesome! Um, I think that about wraps it up. We've been talking for a while now. Probably. Oh cool, yeah, this was this is amazing question, man. This has been really fun. Hey, how about you? Flowers, edible, or dabs? I'm gonna say all three. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, to anybody out there listening, check out these guys. Cash Crop on Steam, Cash Crop on YouTube. I think that's about it. Thanks a lot, Matt. Hey, thank you for uh, taking time out of your day to uh, be on this call with me. Yeah, and we'll see you on the farm. Yeah, see you later.